Welcome back everybody to the 2017 Goodwood Revival. And uh, for those of you who haven't watched one before, we're doing a series of podcasts from here at the cricket match on the Thursday of the Revival. And you will already see that we have two big men from Formula One here, Jackie Oliver and Jochen Mass. Now you two have history. 1979 and 1980. I am speaking at the moment. No. Carry on, Jochen. Well, the history goes back a little bit earlier to 73, in fact, to the German Grand Prix, when uh, I made a plan, the last lap, to overtake Emerson in the Lotus with the 30s. And um, Jackie was following me with a bit of a distance still, and so on. And the last corner, Galgenkopf, onto the long straight, last lap, I, I was much quicker than Emerson in that corner. I took it nearly flat, but there was a little accident and yellow flags everywhere, and we had to break hard and so on. And then Emerson accelerated first, then I second, and then Jackie came up behind because he had a better run, and there was nobody to slow him down as much other than the yellow flags, of course. And then I didn't want to let him go by, so I moved over a little bit. I sort of weaved, and he, it really nagged him badly. And he said afterwards, he said, Jochen Master said yes. He said, you nearly pushed me in the wall. <laughs> and I said, well, hedges, hedges, Jackie, there are no walls. But, uh, you know, I've, I've, I knew it was, it was wrong. But on the other hand, I didn't want to last lap. I didn't want to let him go by. So I finished seventh in this, your, your arrows, right? No, sorry, your, 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 you your shadow. Do you remember your this, shadow. Jackie? Jochen, I don't remember that. It was one of my, it was where, my first where was it? 73 race. It would have been Shadow, <laughs> I was driving for Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Where was the race? At Nürburgring, at the Nordschleife. I know, anyway, it was nothing, no big deal. But it, of course it upset you. And it was rightly so, because, you know, I sort of made these moves. Today I would be punished. <laughs> but then, anyway, so that was the first time that I met Jackie. I raced at the Nürburgring Nordschleife in a Shadow in 73. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is this is the beauty of the Goodwood podcast. Is it allows you to relive those <laughs> moments that you've long forgotten. But the '73 German Grand Prix was at Hockenheim. Not no, quite. No, no, no. <laughs> was it? No, no, no. It was the first one was Silverstone for me. Second one was Nürburgring, and the third and fourth in '73 was Watkins Glen and uh, Mossport. No. Where did you finish? In at the Nürburgring, I finished seventh. So I must Emerson have finished eighth. Sixth, you finished eighth. Yes. Yeah. Out of the points again. Out of the points, me too. And you, and you had words with him after the race. That's no what, way. Yes, apparently you did. I never talk to anybody that finishes in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, of course, the, uh, the thing about... The I only talk to people that finish behind me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is a funny thing actually talking about not talking to people. I followed Carlos Reutemann in Nivelle at the Grand Prix after the start and he pushed so many cars, you know, he bumped into cars, three or four of them, and I managed to squeeze behind him fairly close between the gaps as well. And I asked him afterwards and I thought, Christ, it was, it was an accident in the making, but it didn't happen. So it was okay. And I said, Carlos. I said, Jesus, the first two laps, I mean, you bumped up. He said, I never remember the first two laps in the races. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice little story, isn't it? Because the thing is, what's important about this is the fans love this kind of thing because they never hear about these stories. Because in those days, there was very little television coverage, if any, actually. So we never really got to hear from all our heroes, the drivers. You know, we didn't have cameras in the pits like we did when Schumacher tried to punch Coulthard's lights out at Spa, that kind of thing. So did, did, in those days, did you guys talk to each other quite a lot, you know, as, as in... I, I, the most interesting thing for me now is sitting here now with Jochen, who drove for me with the Arrows team for two years. We could have a conversation now of what we did then Right. Now, much better than we could have done then. The trouble is with the arrangements where it's so important for a driver or a team owner 
that you can never have the discussion. So the thing I want to ask Jochen now is the two years with Arrows, as the whole years with Arrows from 78 until I sold it in 2000, I never won a Grand Prix. Why couldn't we had a good car in 1979 and 1980 with aerodynamics, with you and Ricardo. Why did we never win? We never won, Jackie, because A, I think occasionally bad luck played a part with something. And then uh, we made, we drivers made our mistakes as well. The car, I always felt, and that was to me, Arrows was uh, next to McLaren, the best team I drove for. And I loved the cars. And the A3 was a wonderful car to drive. But even the A, uh, the first one in 79 I drove. The A2. The A2, yeah. And um, it was a great car. And I remember in Monaco, because, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do the extra practice to qualify for proper practice because I felt that I'd been the points with McLaren. Of course I was, not with the ATS of course. And so on, so I was inward, I was, eh, I didn't want to do it. So I got over from, from Capferra with the motorboat, landed in the port, changed quickly, walked up. Everybody was practicing already, eight cars, two qualified for further practices. And so on. And you know, I changed and walked over and everybody said, don't you want to drive, don't you want to drive? I said, nah, nah. and I pitched around, which was stupid. And I saw my car standing there with the guys, with the mechanics, the belts hanging out and they sort of looked at me. And there was, you know, this announcement on the, on the speaker said, mass is out because they didn't practice. So I thought, damn it. Mm -hmm. So I quickly jumped in, strapped myself in. I had one flying lap to do. And I finished, I had the second time in one lap. And it was great. And I thought, it worked. And then in the race, we were lying third, close to second. And then the brake ducting on the right side fell off because I always hit this tiny little curb at the end of the swimming pool, which was not a big deal, but it always made this extra knock. So the brake ducting fell off. And it came into uh, in Tabak, Tabak, the left-hander. and. The brake pedal stayed down, I thought, shh. But I didn't hit anything, so I came back into the pits, and I quickly pushed the pedal up, and I put on some ducting quickly, however we could do it. So I finished at the end fifths, I think. But it was a pity, because I felt second was sure, because that guy would have overtaken, and even the first one had a problem. He might have had a chance, but it's so often might have, and so on. But um, this car deserved, and the last one, the A3, should have won the race, absolutely. In Argentina, I was leading, first lap, I overtook Nicky, and I waved at him, you know, it was great. And then I skidded off a little bit because the road broke up, and I knocked the wing off, knocked the front wing a little bit, so anyway, I finished seventh at the end. And it really angered me, I thought, unjust to the car and to the team. But when, we, Jackie, Jackie, when we talk about, when we look back at Arrows, and you've just said yourself, you had some very, very good people there. And you had some good sponsorship. I mean, at the time we're talking about, you had Warsteiner, which came with Rolf Stommelen. Did, did you not, as, as an owner of the team, did you not talk to the other management about, you know, why aren't we winning a Grand Prix? When I decided to stop driving, I, it was a, a decision uh, that I would never drive my own cars. I saw John Surtees do it. And that's a mistake, right? because you can't drive your own car and not compete, because then you start to make judgment about the car when you're three seconds slower than the guys you've hired. So don't put yourself in that position. So that was my philosophy, and I never drove any of my own cars. If you hire a team manager, and I had a very good team manager in Alan Reese, and I had very good designers, the same thing applied. Why tell someone that you've hired to do a job how to do their job? My job was to orchestrate the team with drivers, sponsors and engineers and find the money to do it. So I never interfered. I went along with the program. And I had some very good designers and I had some very good drivers of which Jochen was one. So the only, the only yeah. thing 
that I didn't do, right, is that I never looked at what was going wrong and tried to persuade those people responsible to change tack for the same reason. And I think if you can orchestrate a, a, a program, you start to see where it's going wrong and then you step in, and I never did that. If that's a regret, I'm sorry for it, but that's no, no, true. Sure. But, you know, I loved the team. The mechanics were great, and Jackie was great, and, you know, Tony Sauskett was a very good guy, and so on. So it was just, he came up with these brilliant ideas, and, you know, we had this sort of patent-pending thing, and um, it looked spectacular, and I think it would have worked well, but, you know, it's difficult for me to persuade. Now, there's still one or two running in the in the classic series and I told them change the springs go much harder and I have to talk to them again whether they had or not but um, it would have made a difference because later when we had this problem with porpoising yeah. you know it's it wasn't then spring rates it was the tires flexing in uh, on the sports cars so it was different but it was the same reason too much downforce and so on and you know you back off on the straight you have to do exactly the same which was a great pity and um, I love the car, I love to look at it and all that. It just didn't work well at the time, well enough, because of the springing. And uh, to persuade Tony Southgate to come up with harder springs, for some reason we didn't do it. And it was a bit annoying <coughs> at the time, because I sneaked around, of course I asked the mechanics from, from Lotus, and I asked them what spring rates they had. And normally, you know, looking over their shoulders, they said, 2,600 or whatever. And, um, you know, that would have helped it. But anyway, and the last car, you know, I, we practiced the first practice in, uh, in Austria, in Zeltweg. The car was so good. I loved it. It was so nice. I thought, this is great. And then the engine blew up in front of me and I skidded off into the grass from the oil. And then I thought, no problem. Uh, but it was a problem as it turned out. I rolled the car because it dug in, nearly broke my back and so on so on. three flips lying upside down i got a photo now with me and i'll show you tomorrow <laughs> but and anyway uh, happily we're all here anyway <laughs> anyway but that car that practice time i did in the first practice would have been fourth place on the grid so the car was good and it just pains me to think that we never managed to do better than that yeah. now ricardo was very good but it was a bit too early for him he was a bit like max verstappen making little mistakes all the time and in fact i took him once and i said you know what ricardo let's try not to overtake only when it's sure sure don't dice with anybody you will finish it will be in the points he said no oh. and he did and from then on it broke the ice seriously yeah. and he became well this is what's good about goodwood because I'm a lot older than the drivers that used to drive for me. So now I have the opportunity to see my lovely friend Jochen and Ricardo Patrese. And where do I see them? I see them at the behest yeah. of Lord March putting on these events. So we can sit and have a conversation like this. How wonderful is that? That's one of the great things to no, be exactly. invited to go with. Just, just to finish off that thing though, it it's very, very difficult to win a Grand Prix, isn't it? I mean, let alone a World Championship. I mean, it's a, it's a hugely... Do you want to know why? If you look at the history of Grand Prix racing, the people that win the championships are consistently well-funded and well-organized and very powerful. All the lovely drivers that I had, the best drivers, the best designers, and even sometimes the best sponsors, were all taken from me because they could get more with a team that had been previously successful. Eddie Jordan had a very good name for it and he said to me, welcome to the Piranha Club. And that is the trouble and you see it now in yeah. Formula One that it's just the top three or four teams. Once you start to win a championship, you've got to be really stupid to lose that dominant position. And you need the people behind you because it's very difficult to win a race without beating people. <laughs> what, what do we all think? What do we all think about how Formula One racing is today? Uh, if we look at the championship this year, it's actually quite exciting because it's touch and go between Vettel and Hamilton. The problem is, 
it appears that these modern cars cannot follow each other when, once they get close to each other. You never could. No, Rob. Yeah, sure. Especially not with the downforce cars. High downforce cars. I mean, one guy putting the wing flat and can overtake. What's the point in doing that? So to me, the regulations are way out of being sensible. So that's a pity. We should. Huh? And the cars are too easy no, to drive. No, but Jackie, I mean, Jackie, what, what, is, what is your view of the, of the current state? Jochen. Yeah. If I gave you a radio and 20 buttons to push on the dashboard when you drove for the arrows, and I was talking in your ear, would you be able to handle that? So that I is a skill. So that, I would hate it too. So that's one skill the young guys have. All right? So they are controlling the race from the pit wall. You have to have some of your brain right, on that subject rather than what we used to do with 100%, well me, 100% of my brain and trying to keep the car on the track. So that's the first point. The second point is that when you come up against a guy in a car that is almost the same as yours, you could never pass him. I think that's a shame. The rule now means that if you can get within a second, that means you were faster than him because you were catching him. They've given you a device to pass him. And if he can't hang on to you and do the same to you the next lap by being a second behind you, there's another demonstration that he wasn't fast enough. That sounds like a fair competition to me. No, that's, but, but that, that is, excuse me, sorry, Rob, this is quite okay what you say. But I'm already objecting to the difficulties following a car closely, not losing too much downforce doing that, and so on. That means your underbody, your diffuser, and God knows what has to go. You have to, the car must be able to follow somebody without you losing a bit of whatever. And then you, you're too quick entering a corner because your car is so effective when you brake late. You can do it. How can you outbreak somebody with the same sort of performance level of the car's, you know, grip or whatever? You can't. That means you've got to take all the wings off. No, not off. No, 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 no. You need a safe drive. I know what you're saying, and you're right, of course. But, you know, you have to... This is not just one thing. You know, not just the wing. You have to alter your aerodynamic package to make it a little less peaky, a little less performing. And then it would be better, I think. Okay. Just, fi just finally, uh, Grand Prix racing is supposed to be entertainment. It's not just a business. It's supposed to be entertainment. And, you know... Not now, then? Yeah, I mean, it, I find it entertaining. But, but the figures are not as good as they used to be. Um, and I ask the question again, you know, what, what changes do you think need to be made to... Because it's going to have to fight Formula E, it's going to have to fight all sorts of opposition. I think it's a longish story in which there's no room to come up with a right. ready answer and a ready explanation. You have to explain the whole thing all around. I'm not capable of doing that ad hoc like that. I cannot. But uh, I have some pretty good ideas. Jackie knows, of course, with his experience being team leader and driver and all that. I've driven the Williams in '95. He said 20 laps I can do, I was quick with it. And the car was amazing. And it was high down for us, and Sydney was easy flat, doing 347, and so on, so lap after lap, and so on, so the car was fabulous. And I thought with a car like this, Jesus Christ, of course you win the championship. If you're fit enough and whatever, you know. But, um, so, you have to defuse the cars for me first make them a little less complicated in terms of aerodynamics yeah. and whatever and uh, allow the spectators to understand better what's going on a little bit because now the cars are too quick i mean what do you see nothing you're too far away you see oh, oh, they go and then you see nothing anymore and so on to come down if you stand around here in goodwood and you race and you watch it i mean you know the old formula ones or whatever you know like you did some years ago was spectacular and the cars look good and the speed at the end looked impressive already so it's a question of you know perception in the moment we sell something which is so much hype and so much importance 
Yeah. So what? Yeah. Sheer performance. Sure. Great. The engines are for the manufacturers. Yeah. Mercedes, now they can say. And they do, of course. We're the best. We win every race, more or less. Ferrari is catching up again, thank God. And so on. So. But the spectators have nothing from that. They don't get the game anymore. They don't understand. And then you have 35 million, whatever, pay to the driver. You know, the best drivers per year. 40 million, 25 million, <laughs> or whatever. So this is, I mean, how much is that more than any of your budgets you ever had? Let's finish on Goodwood. That's where we, where we started. What, what are you doing this weekend, Jackie, at the Revival? I'm driving a BMW 700. <laughs> and I tell you what, I'm pleased to drive it because the 700 with Alfred Quant saved the BMW Enterprise from going bust in 1959. Well, I, <laughs> you know, I drove one as a kid. Did you? Yeah, but not in the races, but on the road. Really? My girlfriend had one. She was studying and I drove that car. I had loved that thing. No, it was good. Well, it, we we bought the car. We bought the car about five or six years ago, <laughs> and it's yeah, yeah. it's very difficult to drive because the engine hangs over the back wheels, and it's only got two cylinders. So the engine braking is stronger than anything else. So if you lift in the wrong place, you just swap ends and end up in the wheat field. <laughs> What's your job for the weekend, Mr. Mass? I'm driving a Gullwing, which is very nice, the HK engineering one, and I drive a Jaguar Mark One, the E-Type which I very much look forward to. It's a great car. Good. Well, have fun, both of you, and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank that you, Rose. Enjoy the conversation. The Arrows team <laughs> reunited. Sadly, it's no longer around. Yeah, Sadly well. not. They're reunited here at Goodwood. Yeah. Thank you, guys. No, it was a good team. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that uh, little look back in time with uh, Jackie Oliver and Jochen Mass. It's been great to have you with us here at the Revival. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye-bye.